This video tutorial will help solve free response question number three from the 2012 AP Chemistry exam. Let's read through the problem. A sample of CH3, CH2, NH2, that is called ethyl amine, is placed into an insulated container where it decomposes into ethene and ammonia according to uh, this reaction depicted as a Lewis, uh, Lewis dot structure. So the first question gives you a table of entropies in joules per mole Kelvin and asks the following. Using the data in the table, calculate uh, the value of the standard entropy change, delta S, for the reaction at 298K. So for anything thermodynamic, if you're asked for the, uh, the, the delta S of the reaction or delta H of reaction, it's always the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants. So this question is essentially an exercise in substituting values from the table. So the sum of the products, uh, products are here, is simply 219.3 plus 192.8 joules per mole Kelvin minus, and be careful of your signs here, minus a positive 284.9 joules per mole Kelvin. And uh, when you sum these two values together, you end up with a value of 127.2, show your units, joules per mole Kelvin. Part B of the question uh, asks, using the uh, the bond enthalpy values shown in the table below, calculate the uh, delta H of the reaction in kilojoules per mole uh, for the reaction at 298K. So the formula you need to use here is uh, under, you have, need to understand that the delta H of the reaction is equal to the amount of energy you put, need to put in to break bonds, and that's a positive delta H, minus the, uh, the amount you need to, uh, that is released when bonds are formed. So minus, uh, that's a negative delta H, but uh, the minus comes from that negative. So in other words, the, the energy change in the reaction will be a result of the amount of energy you put in to break the bonds versus the amount of energy that's released when the bonds in the products are formed. So this question is an exercise in counting up the number of uh, different bonds. So uh, here's the the bonds broken are shown in the ethyl amine. So you've got one carbon to carbon plus uh, five carbon to hydrogen plus one carbon to nitrogen uh, plus two car, uh, sorry, nitrogen to hydrogen bonds. So you have to sum that value up, um, nitrogen to hydrogen, two nitrogen to hydrogens. Okay, that's bonds broken. Let's write that here. Bonds broken is this value right here. Bonds formed would be the second part of the equation shown here. Bonds formed would be, again, counting up the number of bonds in, uh, in our product. And again, we should go back to the Lewis structure to count these things up. Uh, Lewis structure is shown here. So bonds formed, we've got one carbon to carbon double bond. We've got four carbon to hydrogen bonds, and we've got three nitrogen to hydrogen bonds. So again, this is just an, a, a, an exercise in sort of tabulating and calculating uh, number of bonds broken versus bonds formed. You, you can uh, see that there are going to be some things that will cross out. For example, uh, four carbon to hydrogen in uh, products formed, well look, there's five carbon to hydrogen in bonds broken. So some of those things will cancel out. There's also a uh, carbon to nitrogen that'll cancel out. So you can make your math a little bit easier, but my calculations uh, gave me this answer. The, the final delta H of the reaction is a positive 49 kilojoules per mole. And remember, if delta H is positive, the, uh, the reaction is endothermic. So look at part C, part C of the question says, based on your answer to part B, predict whether the temperature of the contents of the container will increase, decrease, or remain the same. So I think the fact that we've got a positive delta H of the reaction, it is endothermic, tells me that the reaction is going to absorb energy from the surroundings. And if it does so, uh, the temperature of the surroundings will decrease, will get colder. So the temperature will decrease. So that, that, that's the answer to uh, part C right there, temperature will decrease. 
Part D of this problem brings kinetics into the fold. Let's read the question. An experiment's carried out to measure the rate of the reaction, which is first order. That's important. Uh, look at the second sentence. The AP exam loves to do this. You've got to be careful of your concentrations. A 4.7 times 10 to the negative 3 mole sample of ethylamine is placed into an evacuated 2-liter container. When you calculate initial concentrations then, remember it's that number of moles per 2 liters, so you need to do a little bit of math shown in the green text below. After 20 minutes, you've got a final concentration which is less, uh, so the ethylamine has, uh, has decayed or decomposed into the two products and that concentration is 3.6 times 10 to the negative 4. So calculate the rate constant for the reaction. Well, from your equation sheet, the, first or, the equations for first order uh, decay uh, is, is given. So you can use this equation and simply substitute values into the uh, A sub T. A sub T means the concentration at some time T. A sub 0, shown here, or A naught, is your initial concentration. So let's do that. Let's calculate or substitute some values. First calculated here in the green text is the initial concentration, 4.7 times 10 to the 3 moles per 2 liters, or 2.35 times 10 to the negative 3. We were given a final concentration in the text of the equation. So this is actually a pretty simple calculation. It's the natural log of 3.6 times 10 to the, that's a times, times 10 to the negative fourth minus the natural log of 2.35 times 10 to the negative 3 is equal to negative k, and t is 20 minutes. Okay. Uh, and so k is what we're solving for, and now we know everything except for k. So this is a simple matter of solving for the unknown, and I got a value of k is equal to 0 0.094 per minute. You can also write it as 0 0.094 minutes to the negative one. Be very sure you include your units in the answer because it's specifically asked that you include units. Question E asks you to calculate the initial rate in moles per liter per minute of the reaction. Uh, so you need to be able to write a, a rate expression for this reaction. And a rate expression is always written the same. R is equal to the rate constant times the reactant concentrations. So uh, with exponents, if, they, if you have orders of the reaction, this is a first order reaction. We were told that in the problem statement, so there are no exponents. Um, and to initial. Uh, and we know K. We solved K in the previous step. Let me go back to the previous slide right here. We solved for the value of the rate constant. So again, this is just another uh, exercise in, in sort of substituting in uh, values. We also knew the initial concentration. The initial concentration was given. We needed to do a little math to figure that out, but that's, that's this value right here per 2 liters. Okay? So R is equal to 0 0.094 per minute times uh, the initial concentration, which was 2.35 times 10 to the negative 3 moles per liter. And once you do that calculation, I ended up with a value of 2.21 times 10 to the negative 4 moles per liter per minute. The final part of this question asks, if 1 over the ethyl amine concentration is plotted versus time for this reaction, would the, re would the plot result in a straight line or is it a curve and explain? Uh, you should know a little bit about first order decay. A great model for first order decay is radioactive decay, um, where concentration of some radioactive species versus time would give you sort of a typical decay curve that looks like this over time. If we did 1 over uh, 1 over x, let me do a smaller version, 1 over concentration of x versus time, then we might expect to see something like this over time. Uh, so it also results in a curve. So the justification, the answer is, of course, it results in a curve, and the justification is that um, it's an exponential decay. So uh, the natural log of x versus time would be a straight line, and if it were a second order decay, the one over the, the concentration of the initial reactant uh, if in second order would be a straight line. Mm -hmm.